Good morning, everyone. So we will be starting our class now. And uh, today we will be covering the remaining listening item types, which we left on day before yesterday. This because uh, yesterday I just had a small test for the writing, both the task in there, summarize uh, written text and uh, the essay itself. And the students who have sent me, I'm just checking your answers, guys. And uh, in the like the weekend, you will be receiving your results for the same, right? So how much you scored, what are the mistakes, where you need to work on. So everything I'll be just uh, quoting up, writing up in an email and sending that to you, right? So uh, for the listening item types, I believe we left with uh, only three or four item types from the list, right? So we'll be doing those one today. The class is provided by CECA, guys. It is free of the cost class. You do not have to pay anything to attend this class. And uh, this is like uh, uh, since April month, we are running this class and the timing is 10 to 12, right? And if you want to attend the weekend class, it is also available for the PTE. That's on Sunday, 12 to 2 is the timing. But the link is different, Zoom link is different. So if you want that link, you can call on this number and you can get the link straight away. There won't be anything they will be asking or something like that. So same, there are ALS classes, there are Nati CCL classes for Hindi, Punjabi, Urdu and Nepalese language. So if you after the class, you can just contact on this number, right? And you get the link straight away, right? And uh, besides that, you can like the Facebook page of Sika. There you get all the updates regarding the link timings and the online webinars, right? Which are free of the course where you can talk to the migration agent, where you can talk to the education counselor, right? And you can, um, you know, assess the TR options and the PR pathways, right? So you are after any process right now, it is completely free of the cost for the education counseling, migration counseling, classes itself, right? Canadian migration process, you want to know about that, you have, want to have a counseling about that, that's also free. So you can avail all those services, maybe you can give call on this number, or maybe you can leave a message on the number and they'll be getting back to you, right? So today, Starting with the listening. So as we started from the right from dictation that day. So today we'll be starting from the beginning. Uh, so first of all, it is like we know that third part. The timing will be 45 to 57 minutes, right? And these are the question types. So out of these question types, uh, we did uh, right from dictation, then highlight incorrect words. They, we did that as well. Then highlight correct summary and filling in the blanks that's what we did but yeah we'll try to cover finish filling in the blanks as well today as uh, it's just like we did only one question of that and the time was up right so now starting with the summarized spoken text today so here after listening to a recording you have to write a uh, so a 50 to 70 word summary, right? So here it is a bit different from the SWT, which is summarize spoken text, right? There, when you are uh, listening, you are writing a summary, but yes, in one word, right? And here you are writing a summary, uh, oh, sorry, in one sentence, but here you are writing a summary in 15 to 70 words, but there is no limit of the sentences here, right? So maybe we are writing four sentences, five sentences. So this is how we are completing this one, right? So let me give a moment. Let me set up the audio. Okay. So the both skills will be getting scores that is listening for sure. And another one is writing, right? So written discourse matters a lot here. Spelling matters a lot here. Punctuation marks matters a lot here. So you have to take care of all these things, right? And uh, here we go, like 10 minutes for the answer. 50 to 70 word is the word limit. Minimum word 50, max word 70. So you're not... Uh, writing more than 70 and in the same moment you are not, uh, not writing less than 50 words, right? So there are the box, there will be a box provided to write your answer beneath uh, the in instruction because you are hearing so nothing to be, look at the question like this, the instruction and the answer box will be provided. And one side of that, there will be a timer of 10 minutes and other side of that, there will be the word count, right? So when you are listening to the lecture, 
you need to take notes right so if you are not taking note it will be difficult for you to just uh, write the correct summary right so note taking is quite important for this question and uh, the erasable notepad uh, note board must be used for the note taking right so when you taking note you have to look at what the main subject of the lecture what are the key information presented in regards to that subject in the lecture that are the points you are going to note down right but besides that if you feel like any information is important but you're not pretty sure about just write it up because sometime uh, we feel this is not important piece of information but then it comes out to be the key note right so uh, definitely write whatever you can write and always follow the Abbrevi abbreviated word format to uh, take notes and secondly use the sign language so when i say abbreviated words so that mean if i suppose have to write booklet right so i'll be making an abbreviated form for this word right so that when i'm no taking note it will speed up the process right i'll be able to take more notes because i'm writing less spellings right don't bother about the spellings when you're taking note some students they tend to write the full word while note taking so what happened those students won't be able to take good notes uh, not at all definitely because they will be too get involved into the uh, writing spelling of that word and in that moment like another 3 4 5 sentences they'll be gone right so that's why uh, abbreviated words to be used for note taking right so in case uh, you have this word booklets maybe for me it's b o e t so for me this is booklet right so you have to actually uh, you know make your own abbreviated forms that you understand for every word because when you hearing the lectures here you will be getting no uh, getting to know okay this sort of the lecture can be there these are the words normally i'm writing for the note taking okay so these are the common words for these common words i'll be just designing these abbreviated forms right so it is uh, important for the content if you writing the key notes right you will be getting good marks on the listening and for the writing as i told you the punctuation the spellings the written discourse right these all the things are important if you following them you getting score in the uh, writing as well so this is the template for the sw uh, spt right summarize spoken text so you see this is like already 42 words are there somewhere around 40 to 43 words are uh, already there so beside these words you are just adding the phrases you have taken as the notes right in the spaces given so there are you see uh, uh, there are around uh, six spaces right so maybe you have taken notes and always try to take note in phrases because the phrase impart more information and uh, they help to make you good sentence right a complete sentence and they get they help you to actually get good marks on the content as well right so it is quite important that you take notes in phrases but just in case maybe you know sometime we are not that good in note taking or maybe this lecture is too fast right so in that case what you can do simply quickly write any words you are hearing in that sentence and that that is like something uh, you, which seems important right according to the content it seems key note right quickly write that up right maybe you can just write one word in here depending on how well you have uh, how, how well that word is conveying meaning in the sentence and adding up the meaning uh, of the sentence adding up to that so you can also fix it with one word right because see this is already uh, 42 43 i guess words so maybe you are adding six words here or seven words here right so you are already 50 plus right or 50 or 50 plus so 50 is the minimum word limit right so you can easily catch up with the word limit with the template you don't have to worry much about the sentence formation because almost 80% of the sentence is done here punctuation is already followed as the first letter is capital at the last there is a full stop right spacing is given where it needs to be like after additionally like there is a after comma and after comma there is a spacing right he and she you not writing both it is like if the uh, speaker is male you writing he if uh, uh, there is a female voice then you writing she right so in uh, these pr both pronouns you are picking only one right so this is how you are following it fixing the things in here and you are done with the summarized spoken text right and uh, yes you have a question or it just like you just entered in the class okay 
So now be ready to take notes. We will be doing two SPTs and after that moving to the next question. So next we will be doing filling in the blanks for the uh, listening, right? And we will be talking about that too. First, we will be doing this, right? So be ready to take notes and after you have taken notes, you have to send me the answer in the chat box, right? And your answer will come straight to me. So you don't, don't have to worry to select my name or something. So just use this template, right? Send me uh, the key information you might, you, you're going to take uh, in the notes, right? And then fixing it in the template and sending it here and uh, watch your words, how many words you are writing. Your spelling needs to be correct. Punctuation needs to be correct and grammar needs to be correct, right? So let's... Mm, give me a second. I'll just hear you one short lecture quickly. It will be just 60 to 90 minutes lo uh, seconds long. It won't be more than that, right? Just a second. Give me a second here, yeah, please. So now you will be hearing the lecture. So be ready to take notes. I am on my way to work. So, okay, fine, no worries. We will be just doing two lectures. So it's okay. You can tell me in advance. Okay, so this is I'm playing now in within 10 seconds. You will be hearing this lecture. So be ready to take notes now. Seven. So here it goes. One, zero, and... One of the social issues faced by the state of Alaska is the lack of mental and emotional well-being of the native Alaskans. It is very unfortunate that many of the Native Americans are living under poor conditions throughout the country. In the cases of Native Alaskans, even virtually entire villages are suffering from a lack of mental and emotional well-being, which includes continuing poor physical and mental health. Alcohol abuse, domestic violence, homicides and suicides are frequent among them, which of course lead to families falling apart. It is tragic to see that many children are abused and not educated properly. As a matter of fact, the children themselves are abusing alcohol and other chemicals and the rate is increasing over the time. Since parents are suffering from mental illnesses and alcohol abuse, they can't take care of their children. So many children are being taken care of by others or simply neglected. Therefore, we can conclude that Alaskan natives are losing hold of their communities, cultural identities, and most importantly, their childhoods. So you can see how serious the issue is. Plus, rather than making a living for themselves, they are depending on public services and subsidies. They have lost control of and responsibility for their economy and governing institutions. One. Okay, so now it's your 10 minutes started. 10.27, you got 10 minutes. You have to frame this summary now.
always type to type in in the word uh, not in the word document but in the notepad because there there won't be auto corrections and you will be able to know more mistake of yours in term of spelling punctuation capitalization spacing right missing on full stop uh, sentence structure so it's like you will be knowing what sort of errors you generally do while typing right and that you can easily then work on them uh, when you are actually writing in the exam right because that that will make you aware of your mistakes so after you are done in the notepad copy it paste it here in the chat box and send to me we are doing s yes, uh, pt which is summarize spoken text honey the students just heard a lecture so you okay. have to wait a few minutes right they writing their answers okay no worry all right So three minutes passed, seven left. Six minutes left. Five minutes, guys.
three minutes. Okay. Yeah, got one answer. That's from Sukhmeet. I'm reading your answer, Sukhmeet, just letting you know if you covered the main points or not. Okay, so Sukhmeet, the answer you have sent me. Uh, so the first sentence about the, the one thing you have mentioned. So it is covering one aspect. I'll be also letting you know guys the real answer or the what are the key and keynotes here. And uh, then you said that you primarily emphasized on, okay, you're covering the second point here. Additionally, okay, fine, that's good. But also mentioned about okay no rate of further stress turn uh, okay yes and finally f need to be capital it is concluded that the actual operation format okay so this is like covering the keynotes like three keynotes four keynotes are there right but let me just say a few more answers and I'll be just letting you know what are the exact keynotes in the lecture. And you guys, all of you guys can note them down so that if you get any question like that in your exam, you can just simply uh, write the notes, right? Or you can just simply remember, okay, so these are the notes I have taken. Anybody typing and sending answer, just let me know, please. Okay, waiting, but be quick here. We have to do one more lecture and then we move, have to move to other uh, modules as uh, item types as well. Got three, I guess these are 
more words have you counted on the words no ma'am so i guess copy them and paste them in the uh, word document and you will see these are more than 70 i believe Yes. How many words are? Hundred and seven. Other than that, like you have covered the things here, but it's just that uh, the words are more. So you see, you will not be able to type more than seventy words, right? So okay. then you have to make concessions, and then you have to cut your sentences short, right? And it's better if you're just keeping yourself to somewhere around sixty-five. you know okay. such sort of word 69 is fine as well 70 exact is fine as well but after that you won't be able to type okay ma'am okay so the answer here was like the keynote here was the native americans live lives sorry are unprivileged right they lack mental emotional well being alcohol abuse domestic violence homicides and suicides are the results in addition children are not properly taken care by their parents and a lack of education okay who is that a lack of education leads to alcohol and other chemical abuses as they lose control of themselves they are also losing control of the responsibility for their economy and governing institutions So it's like the answer I received. There are the points in them. So if some points are not there, you can remember them, right? And if you are writing everything, like in Gautri as your answer, you have to just look into the main details and just make sentences according to that only, right? Okay. So the one more lecture, and I think. everyone is going to send answer except munila she is at work that's completely fine but manpreet pari shiza okay you just join in varinda hp and honey you joined in so everybody is sending answer now okay this is the next lecture you will be hearing let me see oh not this one So within ten second, you will be hearing the uh, next lecture. Within one second, or uh, within two. Now. Despite impressive GDP growth and oil money, why the Middle East has a lower ranking in Human Development Index? Why has growth failed to translate into a better living standard for the poor in the Middle East? Thanks, Robert, for inviting me to speak on the paradox of high growth and poverty in the Middle East. Middle East countries have failed to translate their impressive GDP growth into a better living standard for the poor. A lower ranking in human development index growth has punctured their claim of welfare states. Their comparatively low public expenditure on health and education has reflected on the quality of health outcome and education outcome. Human development index has exposed their weakness in governance, institutional structure, and legal provisions. They are lacking implementation capacity to produce a desirable outcome. On the contrary, countries Bangladesh and Sri Lanka with mild economic growth and limited resources have done extremely well in the health and primary education sector. Empowerment of women and gender equity in political and economic sphere lead these countries to achieve spectacular performance in social sectors.
On the other hand, Middle East countries need to adopt functional democracy and empower their women, apart from spending a much higher percentage of GDP on health and primary education to realize desirable outcome. Okay, that's done. 10.43 and 10 minutes from now, 10.53.
I received one answer looking at it. Guys, then your answer is high time. I'm not receiving answers. 10.53 minutes left. Only one student HP sent me the uh, uh, answer. Okay, got three. The next answer is from you, Shiza. Yes, got the answer. Very nice, guys. Good. Expecting a few more. Sukhmeet. Yes, thank you. Just a sec.
Okay, the first answer is from HP. Let me see. Okay, so HP, your answer it says um, mm -hmm. no GP growth of the Middle East nation in a sophisticated manner so they don't need you don't have to put a full stop after nations because this is not a completion of the sentence right in i need to be small and a sophisticated manner after that you have to put a full stop he h need to be capital uh he primarily that he Poverty, but also mention the quality and education outcome. Mention the quality and education outcome. The rate of further stress on the government institutional structure. Okay. Okay, just I have read it. I just uh, I just told you the technical mistake. The keynotes I'll be just telling you after reading other answers. There was an economic growth and sophisticated economic problems due to be growth in better living expenditure. Additionally, he not only handled and designed education outcome, but also mentioned about health primary outcome, the rate of the stress and democracy, crucial information on the Middle East as GDP economic growth. So, so me, there are yes, few things mentioned, but yeah, few things are there which you can add and it will add up to your content score. I'll tell you what you miss, missed. Got three. The speaker is discussing what how money is going to utilize the GDP oil money. Okay. Yeah, let the dad. Government institution did not invest in human development education. More what he mentioned. Uh, he mentioned how uh, far ahead when compared to them. In educating and empowering women. After that, empowering women, you need to put a comma. Okay, ma'am. Okay, this, these are exactly 70 words. Yes, ma'am. You have to count in the word document because there it counts the spacing and everything up, right? Okay, ma'am. And Shiza, regarding their educational and health status, you know. Okay, so guys, first of all, Middle East is a country name, right? Or the Middle and East, the two letters, the first two letters of these two words need to be capital, right? So many of you um, use this word, like everyone almost use. Some use the same pattern, but uh, if you're not using it, you will be uh, decreasing your punctuation score. Transmit the growth for poor people, but also mention the lack of implementation. Can you further stress the need to adopt, uh, achieve the desired output? It's very informative lecture. All right. So the answer received here. They are, uh, yes, near to the uh, keynotes, but there are more things you can add in this lecture. So it says, due to lower public expenditure on social sectors, Due to lower public expenditure on low, uh, social sectors, lack of implementation capacity at the grassroots level, weakens in governance, institutional structure, and legal provisions. Right? Middle East is underperforming in the human development sector. Overall, lack of gender equality in political and economic sphere has dependent, or oh, sorry, dampened the impact of economic growth right so this is like first lower public expenditure first thing and where in on which sectors on social sectors and lack of implementation capacity at the grassroots level this has weakened the governance right and the institutional structure of the middle east that's what they are saying and somehow you have added the same thing but in different words right and gender equity in political econo economic economic sphere has dampened the impact of economic growth. This is also one thing you can add, like the gender equity has also affected political and economic spheres, and it has dampened dampened the impact of economic growth. Right. So these are the notes here. 
so these are the two lecture and the students who send the answer thank you for that and the one who are not answering so when you guys will be send, start sending your answers today or some other day okay so filling in the blank as we just did one question on that day so today i'll be doing few more questions here because this is also one of the important question as we are having score in the writing again and uh, here you know that a transcript will be there same recording you will be hearing but there will be gaps in the transcript and you have to fill those gap so you fill in the same uh, same word from the lecture you getting listening score and the spellings are right punctuation is followed uh, and uh, obviously these are the things how you getting scores on the writing right so you have to be ready to write in the erasable notepad right for all the answer of the spaces uh, because sometimes we not so uh, fast in typing and we are just typing the answer number 1 and meanwhile the answer number 2 is already passed so we have to move with the speaker voice we should not lose the track of the speaker voice and that's why we should uh, start writing in the rough notepad or the erasable notebook provided right when the recording is done then quickly type in the answer in the right boxes and when you done with the typing always review in the end like whatever word you have filled in there makes sense spelling is correct do it need any punctuation like capital word first or any hyphen mark or something like that right just check for those these uh, things as well and lastly the singular and plural words right so uh, the sentence also tells you if there is a singular plural error right so that's why it is important that when you done typing all the answers always review at the end right because the sentence itself tell you whether this word is fitting enough for the blank or it need to be in some other form or some other word needs to be there right so i am not uh, showing you the other slides for this question because uh, this one we already discussed a uh, day before yesterday as well so i'm just sharing the straight away the questions with you so here you go with the questions just a second Mm, all right. Just a second. Okay, here you go with the question. It's pasting up. So stopping this, sharing screen again. Right here, you see the question. You read it. I just look into the audio. Okay, you're about to hear it. For biomedical researchers all over the world, twins offer a precious opportunity to untangle the influence of genes and environment, of nature and nurture. Because identical twins come from a single fertilized egg that splits into two. They share virtually the same genetic code. Any differences between them, one twin having younger looking skin, for example, must be due to environmental factors such as less time spent in the sun.
send in the end your answers chat box four words No, Sukhdeep, answer is not right. Honey, uh, first and fourth is right. Shiza, first, third, and fourth, right. Got three, first and fourth is right. Manpreet, fourth is right. Sukhmeet, uh, fourth is right. Okay, guys, you just got two only out of four, and it is not that difficult. Just listen again. Try to get the other two right. To biomedical researchers all over the world, twins offer a precious opportunity to untangle the influence of genes and environment, of nature and nurture. Because identical twins come from a single fertilized egg that splits into two, they share virtually the same genetic code. Any differences between them, one twin having younger looking skin, for example, must be due to environmental factors such as less time spent sun so you got the answer this time still not the second one ma'am yes, okay, does anybody get the answers this time send me otherwise i'll be just letting you know the answer Okay, the first one is twins offer a precious opportunity to untangle the influence of gene. No, this is not right. Got three for third. Precious is the first answer. The second is nurture, nature or nurture. We heard these words very often together. So filling in the blanks normally, uh, just concentrate on the task and you will get the words nurture, N-U-R-T-U-R-E, nurture, nature, nurture. The third is code, C-O-D-E, the same genetic code, code. That's how they say it. Then last is factors. Singular, plural makes a big difference here. You're writing factor, answer won't be wrong. You're writing factors, answer will be correct, right? So precious, uh, nurture, code, and factors. These are the answer for the uh, uh, blanks here. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, just a sec. Here it goes, the next one. Okay, you see the question? It got uh, uh, five blanks there. Okay, I'm playing the audio and it will be playing in another seven seconds. Demand for this exotic fabric eventually created the lucrative trade route now known as the Silk Road, taking silk westward and bringing gold, silver and wool to the east. It was named the Silk Road after its most precious commodity, which was considered to be worth more than gold. The Silk Road stretched over 6,000 kilometers from eastern China to the Mediterranean Sea, following the Great Wall of China, climbing the Pamir mountain range, crossing modern-day Afghanistan and going on to the Middle East with a major trading market in Damascus. Okay, answers, guys. Got 
Kuldi, first is not right. Fourth and fifth is right. Manpreet. Third and fifth is right. Sukhmeet, fourth and fifth is right. Gautri, second, third, fourth and fifth is right. Honey, fourth and fifth is right. Third is also right. Shiza, four right. The one the, you have given me four, they're right. So there are two to three students who haven't sent the answer yet. Are you guys sending the answers? Okay, Manila, you won't work maybe. Varinda and uh, Varinda, you have not sent the answer. Okay, so here the fifth one, you understand? It's clear, it's range. And uh, majorly everyone get that, R-A-N-G-E. -E. The fourth one is kilometers, right? So it need to be plural, kilometers, right? K-I-L-O-M-E-T-R-E-S. And uh, then the third one is commodity, most precious commodity. C O double M O D I T Y. The second one is wool because we're talking about these things westward bringing gold, silver, and wool to the east. Wool W double O L wool, right? And the first one is eventually created the lucrative trade route. Lucrative L U C R A T I V E. Lucrative trade route known as the Silk Road, right? Lucrative, wool, commodity, kilometers, range. These are the right answers here, all right? Okay, one more question for the filling in the blanks. Just a second, stay with me. Okay, there is the question. Now the emergence of, just a sec, look at the question. It got four blanks. Playing the audio related to it. And it will start in um, seven seconds. Now, the emergence of tropical medicine marked a transition, a transformation from something that had preceded it and that I hope won't be confusing, but from the middle of the 18th century, more or less, until the closing decade of the 19th century, there had been an older tradition that can be summarized under the label of the label of diseases of the tropics. And there were a couple classic statements of this older tradition. One was a work, an important work by James Lind, an 18th century physician, who wrote an essay in diseases incidental to Europeans in hot climates. And this was built on the experience of Europeans in the West Indies. 
And then there was another work by James Johnson called The Influence of Tropical Climates on European Constitutions, built on the experience of Europeans in India. Okay, write in and send. Manfred, uh, first answer is right only. And uh, Sukhmeet. Okay, Sukhmeet, your answers are right. Kuldeep, your third answer is right. And Honey, your first answer is right. Gautri, uh, first three answers are right. Kuldeep not fourth is not right. Shiza, your first and third answer is right. And uh, you send the first answer. Manfred again. Okay, so the right answers here are, you are very near to the answers, but there is just small errors all of you did. Okay, the first answer is tropical. Tropical, T-R-O-P-I-C-A-L. You get that? All right. The next is summarized. It is in the past form, right? Can be summarized. S-U-M-M-A-R-I-Z-E-D, Z-E-D, right? So this is how uh, you need to be uh, written the second option, then only it will be right. The third one is physician. It's a singular term. P-H-Y-S-I-C-I-A-N, physician, right? And then the last one is constitutions. It was very clearly said constitutions, right? So if you have written the singular constitution word, your answer will be wrong because it's a plural word with the S at the end. So spellings are C-O-N. So the spellings are C-O-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-I-O-N-S. -T Constitutions, right? So summarized, or oh sorry, tropical, summarized, physician, constitutions. So these are the four answers, guys. All right? Okay, so one and the last question for the fill-ups, right? And I hope this time you're hearing properly and marking the answers right.
this is the question here. Read it. Okay, this is playing in seven seconds. The next topic is going to be black holes, and this is a similar situation. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, black holes were sort of poised precariously on the boundary between theoretical physics and science fiction, uh, a boundary that is more porous than you might believe. Uh, but again, in the past 15 years or so, this has been converted into a standard topic in observational astronomy. There are dozens, probably hundreds of objects we can point to in the sky and say, yes, those things are black holes. And so uh, now the current topic of research is uh, do these things that we are pretty sure are black holes actually behave in the incredibly bizarre science fictiony manner that the theoretical physicists have been talking about for the past 30 or 40 years and so to what extent are these very exotic behaviors actually manifested in real life Answers. You typing answer or just like I need to repeat it? Yes, we are typing. Okay. First is wrong, honey. Second, third, fifth is right. Sukhmeet. Third and fifth is right. Got three, third answer, fourth and Fifth, third and fourth is right, but for the fifth, I, I don't know why I have written there so many words. You know that the answer is going to be only one word. Have, haven't you noticed the trend yet? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so it can't be the many words. Okay, ma'am. And uh, Shriza, first, second, or oh, not first. Third, I mean, second, third, fourth, and fifth is right. First one is not right. Only four students have sent an answer for this blank. So that means the other student didn't get it. 
So you want me to play that again or you are not typing the answers at all? Can you say something guys? Yes, I can't see you, but I can only hear you. So it's better if you can talk to me. Yeah, can you please repeat it? Yes, thank you for asking because that's how I guess the conversation need to be. At least give answers when I ask something, right? Thank you, Kuldeep. Okay, this is I'm playing again, guys. The next topic is going to be black holes, and this is a similar situation. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, black holes were sort of poised precariously on the boundary between theoretical physics and science fiction, uh, a boundary that is more porous than you might believe. Uh, but again, in the past 15 years or so, this has been converted into a standard topic in observational astronomy. There are dozens, probably hundreds of objects we can point to in the sky and say, yes, those things are black holes. And so uh, now the current topic of research is uh, do these things that we are pretty sure are black holes actually behave in the incredibly bizarre science fiction-y manner that the theoretical physicists have been talking about for the past 30 or 40 years? And so to what extent are these very exotic behaviors actually manifested in real life? Okay, so this is the next time. So If you get the answers now, any one maybe, just type in, please. Yes, third is right, Kuldeep. No, honey, this is not right for fourth. And uh, no, not fifth, Kuldeep. Okay, guys, here the answer are okay let me just so maybe you get the first answer right just only one student says send me the answer it is right but the form is not right that means it need to be precariously precariously this is the spelling why i'm typing remember the spelling and match with the pronunciation you heard right so that the next time you're hearing this word this is for the first blank poised precariously on the boundary between theoretical physics and science fiction. That's how they said it. Then the porous, porous is like this. P-O-R-O-U-S. The third is astronomy. And I guess this one need to be clear because this is not so difficult word to hear. Astronomy, bizarre. So that mean, when we say this trend is bizarre, Right. So this is the spelling when it is said and it was very clear. It's just that if you don't know this word, you won't be able to type it right. And if you know it exactly, this is this is also one easy word to get in the in here. Then the last is manifested. Right. So you see precariously, porous, astronomy, bizarre and manifested. These are the right answers here for this plant. Right. And you do remember this thing when you are just answering down the questions in the blanks. You should be remembering the word and the blanks because sometimes uh, these questions do repeat in the exam. And if that's going to be the case, they're going to help you a bit, right? So how many questions we did here? Like five or nine? These are only three. No, this was four. Huh? So nine and four, 13 and five. 17 or how much 14 15 16 18 so total 18 question and the filling in the blanks how much you got you can uh, send me the score if you want to or you can just count for yourself how much you got out here right so the next thing we will be doing right now is the left articles from the list so as we just did the filling in the blanks let me what are left so multiple choice and select missing word these are the two questions which are left so we will be starting with the multiple choice and multiple choice as you know 
like if we're doing the multiple choice multiple answer first thing to get in mind is the negative marking so we have to be sure about that we are not uh, writing typing or marking any answer we're not sure about as more than one responses are correct but we need to be sure if i'm marking something that must be correct if i'm sure about only one option so maybe i'm just marking one option because i'll be getting that mark but if i'm marking something wrong that that like i'll be getting a negative one right for every wrong answer so listening is the skill which getting getting assessed here 40 to 90 second is the time right and the main important thing here is when you're looking at the mcq just like in the reading we do multiple answer we have to concentrate on the options because the option have the keynotes right read the question go through the option take out the keynotes when you have that time seven second time before the audio starts and then it will tell you what are there in the option and if you're hearing something likewise because the recordings will be a paraphrasing it won't containing the same word so something you are looking uh, hearing likewise you, then you can assess that option right sometimes you can also take notes for something suppose you are hearing something related to stone queries but at that at that moment you're not able to uh, assess if the option is wrong or right so what you can do you can simply take notes when the recording is done, you can assess those notes and see if that option is same or it is something different. If it's same, it's an answer. If it's different, it is not an answer, right? So the more important thing, definitely understanding question and after that, taking key notes from the options itself, right? And uh, for the uh, single answers, we have to pay more attention to the question itself, right? So you see here we are just selecting single answer, one answer, no negative marking is there. So we are just marking one option. So if it's one, either it's zero, right? So why we are focusing on the question? Because the question will tell you what you are listening for, right? If you am saying, okay, what is the main idea of this lecture? So that means you're listening for the main idea. So out of four options, whatever is saying the main idea, that's your answer. So that's why just to concentrate enough on the question, read the option doesn't mean that you're not reading the option. And when you're hearing the lecture, just try to, um, uh, you know, try to just look into the option and see which actually stands out as an answer for the asked question, right? It could be about the main idea, about the sporting details, about the sporting information, about any inference drawn, or it can be about any speaker uh, purpose as well, like why speaker is mentioning something for specific reason might be mentioning so maybe that is also at that is also acting as your question so this is like uh, how you will be doing these two questions now let me just pause it for a while and i'll just show you a few question quickly and the last we will be doing select missing word Okay, so first we'll be doing the multiple choice, multiple answer. You see this question according to the text, which of the following countries has a poet laureate, right? So this is the question. So you will be hearing a recording related to this question now. And out of these six given options, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three are right. And you have to see which one is right. And according to that, you are sending me answer in the chat box. Suppose uh, you feel ABC is right, so you're sending ABC, but be mindful for every wrong answer, you will be getting minus one. So mark. Just a second. Okay, now you're hearing the audio within seven seconds. Yes, it's funny you should mention Merwin. Until about a year ago, I thought England was the only country that had a poet laureate. After all, it's a pretty odd job, isn't it? 
no salary to speak of and just a barrel of wine or something as payment. <laughs> but he was or is the American Poet Laureate, isn't he? That's right, but quite a few other countries have one too. I know, I looked into it a bit. Other countries in the UK for a start, uh, Wales, as you'd expect with their Eisteddfords and long poetic tradition, and Ireland and Scotland. Mm. I think some places that were colonies or in the Commonwealth have them. Uh, Canada, for example. And who's that wonderful Caribbean poet? Um, the one that wrote Omeros. Uh, Derek Walcott. That's him. He was the Poet Laureate of St Lucia. But what about the rest of Europe? Don't the French have such a thing? No, I don't think so. They've got the Academy, and you get elected to that if you're considered the best in your field. Mm. But uh, I think Germany might have. No, it wasn't Germany. Somewhere else, but I don't remember. By the way, you're a bit behind the times in thinking what they get paid as a barrel of wine. <laughs> All that changed long ago. But one of the more recent ones asked to have it back. <laughs> Just a sec, looking into your answer. Okay, so Shiza, your answer to this question. Okay, two marks to you, Shiza. Two marks to you, honey. Kuldeep, your uh, first answer is wrong. Later is right. So it's like a, a positive and a negative one. So it, uh, it's like only be right, whatever you're sure about. Got three minus one. This is not right. Sukhmeet, your first answer is right. Second is wrong. Anyone else sending answer? Three, four, five students. Other four. Manpreet. Manila, Varinda, Sukhdeep. So they're talking about which countries have the has the poet uh, laureate, right? So the countries which having it are three. So there are three answers which are right here out of six. So the answer which are right are B, C, and D. St. Luca, the USA, and Ireland. These are the three answers which stands right here and uh, how they have said it. Uh, okay, and, and, and about the Caribbean, let me see if you have marked this. Okay, and who's that wonderful Caribbean part, of, part the one that wrote Almer Rose, Derek Walcott, that's him. He was the poet laureate of St. Lucia. So they mentioned Caribbean person, but he is the poet laureate of St. Lucia. So that's make the C answer and A is not the answer. And uh, besides that, somebody write answer as E, Germany and Germany. But I think it says, but I think Germany might have no, it was not Germany somewhere else, but I don't remember. So they said Germany might have it, but then he just make a concession on the statement. Say contradictory, no, it is not Germany, some other place, right? So you have to listen carefully because sometimes they say the option and then they say a contradictory sentence to the option. That's what they did with the um, Germany here, right? Caribbean they mentioned, but they mentioned in, in concern with the C option. Ireland and USA was clear, right? So let's do one more question for the MCQ here. 
sometimes the option can be like this as well and sometimes the option can be in phrases as well sometimes the options can be in sentences as well see if the options are in sentences that mean uh, you have to pay more attention why because you have to read the sentences and you got only seven seconds before the audio starts okay here you go with the second question which of the following are mentioned in health problem problems caused by noise you get it yes so it will be starting in another seven second guys noises are defined as disagreeable sounds but this suggests that they are no more than an annoyance something to be put up with there is increasing evidence that noise on the scale that people who live in big cities have to deal with is dangerous and can give rise to serious health and social problems some of which such as its effects on people's behavior and anger levels you might not have thought were caused by noise and our health concerns there is of course the almost constant noise of traffic though this isn't a particularly modern problem in ancient rome there were rules to minimize the noise made by the iron wheels of wagons which battered the stones on the pavement causing disruption of sleep traffic noise is one of the health hazards as it can lead to other problems like noise induced hearing impairment it is also highly distracting interfering with speech communication and leisure time relaxation and while this doesn't drive you mad in the medical sense it is intensely annoying and can lead to mental health problems also noise whether you work in a place where loud machinery is operating or not can have an effect on performance at work though in itself not a health matter this can lead to other problems answers please honey uh two answers are right first one is wrong two minus one shizam one mark kuldeep one is right one is wrong so got three one is right the first one later one is wrong and sukmeet mine um one mark sorry One, two, three, four, five students again. All right. Okay. So it is like B, a certain degree on hearing loss, right? And the second option is D, mental problems. And besides that, you you guys picked up uh, picked up E as the option. So for the E, I'll tell you why that's not an option. Behavior and anger problems. So they have saw said that which of the falling are mentioned as health problem caused by noise specifically we just concentrating on the health problem issues due to the noise right so the last option behavior and anger problem so where they were talking about it in the first half or the later half i think first half first half mm -hmm. there is an increasing evidence that noise on the scale that people who live in big city have to deal with is dangerous and give rise to serious health and social problems some of which as its effect on uh, beha people behavior and anger level you might not have thought were caused by noise and health concern right so you see behavior all right they mentioned that but anger is missing right because they said anger levels you might not have thought were caused by now noise right so that's make it a uh, option which we cannot select because if option is half there and half is not same or not there so you, we are not selecting that option right because uh, it need to be have both the things 
either we are not uh, marking this option so certain degree on hearing loss one thing mental problem is another so b and yeah that's what i think b and d yeah these are the two right answers here only all right yes ma'am all right let's do one more question mcq multiple answer and then we'll be doing the single answer two three question for the single answer as well now this one it's having sentences i'll be just sharing all sort of question with you so See here, this is the question. It is in sentences. Right? Just look into the question. I'll be just looking into the audio of it. Read it so that I can play the audio. When you're done reading, just let me know. I'll play the audio. Okay, I'm playing it. In seven seconds, it would be playing. My earliest writers on politics, and I'm thinking of Plato and Aristotle here, felt free to draw insights from all areas of human knowledge. Unlike modern academic writers, who tend to put things into smaller and smaller compartments or focus more closely on one area of inquiry. For example, Plato would examine a whole political system and the philosophy that underlies it, whereas modern writers on politics might concentrate on one particular institution in that system, the House of Lords in England or on voting patterns within a country. With this focus, the bigger questions that the ancients dealt with, what is the best form of government or what is justice, tend to get left behind. Many writers on politics these days are university-based and so have to have specialised interests. And while they may make new and interesting discoveries in their special field, it is at the loss of a broader perspective, not to mention the loss of a general audience or readership. In the 19th century, there were still writers who used the same freedom of inquiry as the ancients and were all the more readable and relevant because of it. Yes, please. Honey, your answers are right. Sukhmeet, your answer is wrong. Shiza, your answer is right. Gatri, your answers are right. There are two options which are right here. The option number B. Kuldeep, you can uh, uh, use the app Ape Uni. So like this. Okay. It is like you have to log in into it, make account. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives you a lot of practice material with the marking also. They'll tell you mark from the question as well. Okay, it's like a mock test? Uh, not mock test. It is like a practice one. And this is the site where you can buy test. Okay. And uh, 
you can um, see where you stands right now and it is not uh, it is cheap like it is um, selling the test for cheap scored one then pt uh, website itself right pte so that's like the one where you get resources pearson pte resources or score test right they are a bit expensive you can look into that uh, like they'll just let you know uh, what is the real pattern where you stand right now because i always recommend student if you want to uh, appear for any sort of paid exam scored one then probably uh, before one week of exam you just sit for that so that you know where you lack, which areas are uh, gray, so that you can work on those areas in another one week before the exam, right? Okay, the score test one? Score test one is TCY, I sent you. Okay. That's a website. And another one is PTE, uh, Pearson PT itself. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sure. And there are options which are right here for this question are B and C. They tend to focus on only one aspect of political systems. Being university-based forces them to specialize. These are the two answers, which are as the suggested reason why contemporary writer on politics are less readable and relevant than the ancient writer. Because they focus on one aspect of political system and they uh, being university-based force them to specialize. So now, just like that, we're doing single answer question. Single answer question, you have to select only one option. There is no negative marking. But uh, concentrate on question, what you are hearing for. Starting with this question. This is single answer question, four option. One is right. I'm looking into the audio of it. Okay, beginning in seven seconds. It is loading. That's not playing. Both the rotation of the moon and its revolution around Earth takes 27 days, 7 hours, and 43 minutes to be exact. Because of this motion, the moon appears to move about 13 degrees against the stars each day, or about half of a degree per hour. If you watch the moon over the course of several hours one night, you will notice that its position among the stars will change by a few degrees. The changing position of the moon with respect to the sun leads to lunar phases. Yes, Isa, that's right. One mark. Kuldeep, Hani, Gautri, Sukhdeep, everyone is right. So you see it bit easy in the uh, single answer, but yes, again, you're getting one mark here only and there you can get two, three marks, right? For a single question. Okay, let me show you the next one. Audio will be beginning in seven seconds. 
Now, the average adult has about five liters of blood flowing inside his body. Blood is the fluid of life, growth, and health. It transports oxygen from the lungs to body tissue and carbon dioxide from body tissue to the lungs. It transports nourishment from digestion and hormones from glands throughout the body. It transports disease-finding substances to tissues and waste to the kidneys. Blood is alive because it contains living cells. Red blood cells and white blood cells are responsible for nourishing and cleansing the body. Since the cells are alive, they need nourishment. Vitamins and minerals keep the blood healthy. Blood cells have a definite life cycle, just as all living organisms do. Approximately 55% of blood is plasma, a straw-colored, clear liquid. Liquid plasma carries the solid cells and platelets. When the human body loses a little bit of blood through a minor wound, the platelets help the blood clot so that the bleeding stops. You would bleed to death without the platelets. Your body is always making new blood inside your bones. When the human body loses a lot of blood through a major wound, that blood has to be replaced through a blood transfusion from other people. But everybody's blood is not the same. There are four different blood types. Plus, your body has RH factors which make it even more unique. Blood received through a transfusion must match your own. Sometimes patients donate their own blood when they are scheduled to have major surgery so that they will have a perfect match. It is called an autologous blood donation. Yes, Gulveep, that's right. Sukmi, that's right. Honey, that's right. Shiza, that's right. Anyone else? Got three, yeah, that's right. Okay, so this answer to this question is right. And this will give you two marks as you're doing it really well in the single answer. Okay, so the answer to this question you just did is C, like main reason for patient, that patient donated their blood to have a perfect blood match for transfusions. Right, that's the answer here, right one. And here you go with the last question. Why did Roman doctors attend the army medical school according to the lecture? You got four options for this question, playing the audio for same. Okay, here you go within seven seconds. Listen to part of a lecture and answer the questions. Okay, class. Today we will talk about Roman doctors at the beginning of the first century. As we noted in our previous class, there was a 15-year-long war after Julius Caesar was assassinated. The war was severe. The number of injured was so many. There were so many that it became one of the top priorities of the new emperor to give medical care to those in need. It was around this time that the new emperor, Augustus, started thinking about upgrading the status of doctors. He realized that medical care was key to the empire and especially an army. In order to improve the medical system, he needed better doctors. So he started making the profession look more enticing. All army doctors were entitled to attend the new army medical school and were given dignified titles, land grants and special retirement benefits. Before this, doctors had a fairly low status. Kuldeep and Shiza. That's right, guys. Uh, Gautri, this is wrong. Honey, this is wrong. No, honey, this is also wrong. Sukhmeet, no, this is not right. Mm -hmm. 
the question here is why did Roman doctors attend the army's medical school according to the lecture, right? And we go after the option. Uh, they had fairly low status. No, this can't be the answer. The Roman army didn't have doctors. So this is also one aspect. But what was the prime reason? Like they have to, the Roman doctors have to attend the army medical school was because they said the doctors or the health or the medical uh, assistance is the key to any army or the soldiers of it, right? So B, they were keys to the army. B, that's the right answer because they said without having good facilities, they might lose their uh, army, they might lose their soldiers, right? So that makes the B right answer here. So... For the guesswork, guys, if you are just doing MCQ single answer and you are just completely blank for the answer, you are not able to understand the question or something, uh, anything in that. So always just go after the C, right? Just mark the C as the answer, right? Or uh, it's like uh, uh, maybe it gets right, you get one mark, just like a hit and trial sort of thing. But yes, before that, always try to listen to the lecture, right? Okay, that's all for today, guys. I'm ending this session now. Is that all good? So we will be seeing each other on Monday now. But yes, there is a session on Sunday from 12 to 2 with Shipra ma'am, right? If you want to attend that, definitely you can ask for the link from uh, Sika and number I already shared with you in the beginning of the class, right? Okay, guys. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Ma yeah, thank you, Godfrey. Welcome. I have a question. Yes, honey. The yesterday we did SST and uh, essay. When are you going to reply for that? Definitely in the weekend because okay. Saturday, Sunday is the time when I'm free. Okay. So probably by Sunday you will be receiving the emails. Okay, no worries. Thank you. All right, sure. All bye right, bye. guys. Yeah, bye bye. Take care. Yeah, so I'm ending this yes. session, guys. Bye bye. See you on Monday now. All right, bye bye. And bye -bye. Can, you guys can have a Sunday class with Shipra, ma'am, right? Bye-bye, guys. See you. Have a good day, Head. Bye-bye.